Hello, you're watching Hornbill TV's Explainery. The Supreme Court of India is the highest court in India and is also the guardian of the Constitution. And today, in a big verdict, the Supreme Court turned down the State Bank of India's request for more time to disclose details of the electoral bond scheme, which the Supreme Court had on February 15th termed the scheme unconstitutional. In today's explanatory, we'll revisit the February 15th verdict and the events that led to the SC turning down the SBI petition seeking extension. In a historic landmark judgment by the Supreme Court on February 15, 2024, a five-judge constitution bench of the Supreme Court unanimously struck down the center's electoral bond scheme, which facilitated anonymous political don donations for being unconstitutional. It underscored that the scheme violates the right to information under Articles 19.1a of the Constitution. The court also struck down the amendments made to the Income Tax Act and the Representation of People Act, which enabled such anonymous political contributions. The Supreme Court then directed the State Bank of India and ordered it to immediately stop the issuance of any further electoral bonds and furnish details of such bonds purchased by political parties since April 12, 2019 to the ECI by March 6. Such details must include the dates of purchase of each bond, the name of the purchaser of the bond, and the denomination of the bond purchased. The ECI then would subsequently publish all such information shared by the SBI on its official website by 13th March 2024. The electoral bonds that are within the validity period of 15 days but have not yet been encashed by the political party will have to be returned, following which the issuing bank will refund the amount to the purchaser's account, said the verdict. The following are our conclusions. A. The electoral bond scheme, the proviso to section 29C bracket 1 of the Representation of the People Act 1951, as amended by section 137 of the Finance Act 2017, section 182.3 of the Companies Act, as amended by section 154 of the Finance Act 2017, and section 13, <coughs> capital A bracket B, as amended by Section 11 of the Finance Act 2017, are violative of Article 19.1a and unconstitutional. And b, the deletion of the proviso to Section 182.1 of the Companies Act, permitting unlimited corporate contributions to political parties, is arbitrary and violative of Article 14. We consequently issue the following directions. a, the issuing bank shall herewith stop the issuance of electoral bonds. B. State Bank of India shall submit details of the electoral bonds purchased since the interim order of this court dated 12 April 2019 till date to the Election Commission of India. The details shall include the date of purchase of each electoral bond, the name of the purchaser of the bond, and the denomination of the electoral bond purchased. C. State Bank of India shall submit the details of political parties which have received contributions through electoral bonds since the interim order of this court dated 12 April 2019 till date to the Election Commission of India. SBI must disclose details of each electoral bond encashed by political parties, which shall include the date of encashment and the denomination of the electoral bond. D. SBI shall submit the above information to the ECI within three weeks from the date of this judgment, that is by 6 March 2024. E. The ECI shall publish the information shared by the SBI on its official website within one week of the receipt of the information, that is by 13 March 2024. And F, electoral bonds which are within the validity period of 15 days, that which have, but which have not been encashed by political parties yet, shall be returned by the political party to the purchaser, depending on who is in possession of the bond to the issuing bank. The issuing bank, upon the return of the valid bond, shall refund the amount to the purchaser's account. Now, after the verdict was given just two days before the deadline on March 4th, the SBI filed an application asking for time until June 30th to comply with the court's direction in its landmark judgment striking down the EBS, after which the SC decided to hear the petition. Against the petition filed by SBI, a separate plea was filed by non-profits organization Association for Democratic Reforms and CPIM, which sought contempt proceedings against the SBI, which was also heard by the top court. The petitioners alleged that the bank had deliberately disobeyed court order to file the details by March 6th. And in another blow to the SBI, a five-judge 
constitution bench headed by Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachur and comprising Justices Sanjeev Khanna, B.R. Gawai, J.B. Pardiwala and Manoj Misra, which heard the matter turned down the state-run lender's request to give an extension for submitting electoral bond data and asked it to furnish all details by tomorrow, that is, the, that is March 12th. The court also warned that it will initiate contempt proceedings against the government-run bank if it does not provide the information by tomorrow. When the five-judge bench, led by the CJI, reconvened to hear the SBI's application and the contempt petitions, senior advocate Harish Salve, representing SBI, submitted that in order to keep the details of electoral bonds purchased secure, they were maintained in physical form and not digitally. Also, he argued the name of the purchaser and the details of the purchase were kept in separate locations. These factors added to the time that the process would take. He submitted. It may be mentioned again that the court had ordered SBI to submit to the ACI by March 6 the details of the electoral bonds purchased since 12th April 2019 till date. It had specified that the details shall include the date of purchase of each electoral bond, the name of the purchaser of the bond, and the denomination of the electoral bond purchased, as well as the details of political parties which have received contributions through electoral bonds since 12th April 2019. CJ Chandrachur pointed out that all of this information was still sent to the main SBI branch in Mumbai and could be found there. Further, each time a bond was purchased, the buyer was required to submit details through a Know Your Customer process which the CJI said implies that the information is available to the SBI, even if it is being kept in a sealed cover. The bench also questioned Salve on the steps taken so far and what the SBI has done for the past 26 days. Salve stated that as per a rough calculation done by the SBI, this would require three more months and cautioned that any mistake in the information published could result in legal action against SBI. Towards the end of the hearing, after the bench had repeatedly pointed out that SBI was not required to match the bonds purchased to those in cash by political parties, Salve conceded that the process could be completed in three weeks. The Communist Party of India Marxist and the Association for Democratic Reforms, ADR, which filed contempt petitions saying the SBI's request for an extension demonstrated willful disobedience of the court's direction in the February 15 judgment, striking down the EBS. The petitioners underlined the fact that SBI had chosen to wait until two days before the expiration of the SC's deadline to file its application. The CPM petition alleged that SBI had deliberately misconstrued the directions of the Supreme Court because the judgment did not require each bond purchase to be tallied against the bond that had been redeemed by a political party. Rather, the court had only asked for the release of details of the purchaser, name, date of purchase of bond, denomination of bond, and the details of the political parties that received and encashed the bonds, date of encashment and denomination of bond. Both these sets of information are readily available with the SBI, the petition said. Even if this tallying exercise was required, the SBI has not provided any cogent reasons for why this exercise would require an extension of over three months, the petition added. At the end of the hearing, the bench did not accede to SBI's request and directed it to submit all of the information to the ECI by March 12th so that the ECI could publish this on its website by 5 p.m. on March 15th. The court also dismissed the contempt petitions, holding, however, that contempt proceedings could be reinitiated if the SBI failed to comply with the new timeline. In view of the above discussion, the miscellaneous application filed by SBI seeking an extension of time for the disclosure of details of the purchase and redemption of electoral bonds until 30 June 2024 is dismissed. Full stop. SBI is directed to disclose the details by the close of the business hours 12 March 2024. Full stop. As regards the ECI, comma, uh, we direct that ECI shall compile the information and publish the details in its official website no later than by 15 March, by 5 p.m. on 15 March 2024. Full stop.
uh, during the, they are not inclined to exercise the contempt jurisdiction at this stage. Bearing in mind the application which was submitted for extension of time, comma, we place SBI on notice that this court may be inclined to proceed against it for willful disobedience of the judgment. If SBI does not comply with the directions of this court as set out in its judgment dated 15 February 2024 by the timelines indicated in this order. A total of rupees 16,518.11 crore has been received by political parties between March 2018 and January 2024 through electoral bonds. Among the beneficiaries, the ruling Bharatiya Janta Party stands out, receiving a lion's share of around 55% or approximately rupees 6,565 crore. PTI reported citing data from the Election Commission and the Association for Democratic Reforms. Now that the Supreme Court order is out, the SBI will have to disclose all information to the Election Commission of India and after which, by 5 p.m. on March 15th, all details will be out in the official website of the ECI. What remains to be seen now is what follows through when all these data is out. In a press conference last month, Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar had said that the ECI would leave no stones unturned to provide a level playing field for the political parties in the Lok Sabha elections 2024. But with political parties receiving almost 16,000 crores, with the BJP receiving around 6,500 crores, will there really be a level playing field for political parties? That is the question. That was all for today's explainery. For more explainaries like this, keep watching Hornbill TV. Goodbye.